Hey guys, Aaron here again. I am in a new garage today. I'm at my buddy Conrad's house and uh, this is Turtle Pear back here, little birdie. He's gonna be joining us today. So uh, today what we have going on is a brand new engine build of a 997.1. All right, so when you hear some squawking throughout the video, <laughs> you will know why. All right, this is my buddy Conrad. Hey, how's it going? So uh, tell us a little bit about the car that this came out of. So this uh, engine came out of a 2005 uh, Porsche 997.1 Carrera S. So it's a 3.8 liter, 130,000 miles, uh, was billowing smoke, not running well, tons of codes, uh, suspected uh, problem with the engine. Uh, got in touch with a whole bunch of people uh, related uh, in the Porsche community. And they said, well, you're probably, you probably have a cracked cylinder, you know, it might have a potential D chunk, but the engine was running at just enough to get onto the trailer. So worked out a deal with this nice professor from Tennessee, went, picked up the engine, uh, I'm sorry, picked up the car, removed the engine, transmission, um, used a couple of websites uh, to do that. And as most experts predicted, the engine was starting, uh, had a crack on, on cylinder number six, number six and was starting to de-chunk. So it was, uh, and we'll you know, have pictures of that, but yeah, the engine was toast. Uh, so um, sent the block over to LN, uh, the folks over there uh, re-sleeved it. Um, all, you know, I would have uh, probably considered a uh, hard tech, but you know, they're in the UK. Lee uh, Jenkins is a really great uh, resource um, as well as the people at LN. But um, we, uh, Send the block, the block came back. That's turtle pain. Uh, the, the block came back. Um, I decided to go with a 4.0 build. Um, the engine was, you know, I've, I've been taking the engine apart, the heads and, and everything was in really good, uh, really good shape. And um, what we're gonna do is build it up to a 4.0. I've never built an engine. I've uh, gathered up a whole bunch of resources, bought uh, different build guides. I've gone online, there are plenty of people um, who are great resources to help out with this. So we are, we have completely disassembled the engine and we are about to do the first phase of assembly, which is putting the crank in, into the crank case. Um, a couple of things that I did, and, and again, everything was fine. Everything has been measured. Things are in good shape. A couple of things that I did uh, that we do different, that, that were suggested was I bought the Porsche, um, bearings the main bearings but then sent them over to calico for a coating and you can see um they they coated this with uh with some sort of space age material highly recommended uh, people who build engines uh for for a living and have been around the block uh, recommend that you do this for the main bearings the thrust uh and the thrust bearings. so we're going to go with with that all of these parts have been cleaned um what did you use to clean them with uh, I used uh, a, a uh, oil eater uh, and then water and then um, uh, a little bit of uh, water displacement and uh, compressed air <laughs> to get it dried up. Uh, and I just finished uh, cleaning that. So the surfaces need to be super, super, super clean. Uh, I've spent already a couple of hours just cleaning. And this was, this was very clean. I mean, the oil was, was fresh. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we are, and now we're gonna start the assembly process. Excellent. Uh, and this yeah. is gonna be super helpful for me because anybody <laughs> yeah. that's following my channel knows that I'm disassembling <laughs> an M96 engine, and this is considered a what? An M. This is an M97 dot uh, one, I believe. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, M97 dot one, uh, but it's fundamentally the same. It's a three yeah. chain. Uh -huh. uh, you know the. Uh, the IMS design change, but the fundamental way the engine works is, is similar. Yeah, so I'll be doing the same process <laughs> shortly, probably, after I get mine disassembled and order new parts. And, and, and hopefully the fun. inside of your engine looks as clean as this one does. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty sparkly. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm, I'm using recommended assembly oils. Um, some people uh, I've, I've heard use um, automatic transmission fluid. This I got from... Ellen Engineering, it's the super high-end stuff. I think I just ordered some of this on Amazon yesterday. Cool. Um, exactly, Amazon, a shout out for them. Uh, <laughs> I've got the Porsche uh, bolts, the factory bolts. Um, I don't know where I put the, with the, with the part number for those, but um, these, are the, these are the 
that's the part number for the 997. It's the same as the 996. Um, because you have to torque, you, you torque them, that torque them multiple steps, and then you have a torque to yield, which uh, Aaron's going to help me out because I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start putting this together. Awesome. All right. Let's see, the first step, uh, I believe we need to put these, um, these squirters. Never forget yes. the squirters. Um, all right, you may have to... So, uh, for, for the assembly, it's important to have, first of all, the parts super clean. Uh, I'm using, um, as a table cover, I use uh, rags that are, that are for, for yeah, the like window. Nice surgical grade stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, actually, this is, this is just uh, the lint-free that's used to clean windows. Um, it's okay. just a, a roll. Gotcha. Uh, this is the lint-free surgical surgical stuff. You, you want to keep your area that you're working on very clean. So, the direction. Here is the crankshaft. Here is where the crankshaft pulley goes. I, I'm using all of that towards me, which means that on this crankcase half, this little pin, which really doesn't need to be removed for any reason, uh, will be pointing towards you. This half has dowels that match to these dowels. I'm sorry, this, this, and this, right? So when you put this over like that, um, and uh, I understand that you have to have them uh, match. The case or the cases are met. They're machined uh, when they're matched. So uh, if something happens to one of the halves, you got to get the whole. You got to get the whole thing. I will show you. Thank you. I will show you when I put this together. Um, th these this part matches you know nicely the mach the machine part, but this dimension is a little bit off, which I thought was very strange, but. Um, I did a I did a practice run and and, and save your old pieces. I, I saved my old parts uh, here. Save your old parts so you can do some practice runs. I I did it. Uh, I put it all together. The crank uh, the um, crank wasn't turning. I put some torque on it and then it turned freely. Even though this dimension was slightly mismatched, but this dimension here was perfect. So very so this, very strange. So this one has a pin to tell you which right. one. What about this side? Um, it does not have a pin, but what you do is you just line up the dowels. There's only one way to put this. Oh, I guess this. if you turn it around the other way, then the dowels are going to be on the wrong side. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then they won't fit because that hole is a little bit bigger than yeah. that hole. Gotcha. So as long as you have the pin with the pulley, you should be, you should be okay. Another important part of this are these squirters. Um, you will see that... Um, these uh, this bearing holders, the, the place where the bearings go, have different holes. Uh, they will go through the bearing, of course, and lubricate um, when needed. But in six places, three on one half, three on the other, there are slightly larger holes. It's a little bit difficult to tell from this dimension. So but it's on the outside. Yeah, on, it, it, on, on this orientation, it's on the outside. And uh, on this one, you know, it, it, it goes consistent. So when this is assembled... Um, Every, uh, every one of these um, uh, uh, holders, uh, uh, crankcase holders, will have a squirter uh, attached to it. Very, uh, very important to put him in. Um, oh, yeah, I see. So this one, the squirter is... Nope, no squirter here. So there's no squirter on the edge, on the ends. Right, this one, the squirter so is here. The squirter is here. This one, the squirter is here. Yeah, so all yep. the back and forth. Uh, got Goes it. Back, back and forth. Cool. Yep. Um, super important to put him in. Apparently, if you don't, then you have very low engine oil pressure and, you know, everything goes, uh, goes to heck in the handbasket. Um, so there you go. Um, those are the tools needed. All right. So the very first step is dropping the squirters in there? Yep. Lubing and dropping the squirters. And take the squirters, put them in the pre-lube bowl. Oh, you got a little lube in uh, there. Nice. Yeah, I got a little... I always want a little lube. Um, so, so these will go face down. And actually, as Aaron and I figured out, that's the only way they will go down. Yeah, you can't put them in the other direction. Just, uh, just a little... Just a little love tap. They're aluminum on that side, so don't, don't get too crazy on them. Yeah, so they look kind of like a bullet casing, so you uh, <laughs> put the... Yep. the uh, Bullet head facing down. Mm -hmm. 
because as you'll see, they do not fit, for example, in this direction. They just stay there. And who wants that? Nobody wants that. <laughs> it's tough to get the yeah. uh, other parts on that way. Hey, Conrad, I just want to point out that you uh, have begun assembling this engine already. Whoa! <laughs> That's a big step. That's a big step. I know. I know. <laughs> Um, there are people that say that there's a time clock associated with it. You know, oh, if you do this, then you've got to do it by a certain period of time. I'm, I don't know. I don't believe in that. I'm, I'm going to keep this in a temperature-controlled environment. I'm going to take my sweet time. Um, and as much as Aaron wants to hang out, you know, we'll, we'll keep you folks abreast of what happened here. But right now, we're just sort of putting, putting the squirter super, super, super important to have that, yeah, yeah, got enough. And um, you'll notice that I took my gloves off. Um, helps you sort of make sure um, if you feel any any you know, debris or whatever, you know, just go ahead and clean. There's you can never have this stuff clean enough, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's uh, super, super important. Uh, to do, of course, the oil filter would pick up some of the little stuff, but you know, do your, do your job. So we've got the six squirters in, super critical uh, part of it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting these um, uh, bearings on. So we're going to lubricate the bearings, and, and there's a there's a trick, I guess, to uh, putting the bearings. So we want to put some some lube here, some lube here. This stuff's kind of stringy, isn't it? I've never it used a stringy. assembly lube. Yeah, and some people say that this is too thick. Um, you know, to use some uh, people use transmission transmission fluid really? sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, because it's nice and thin. So um, you'll see that this has a little bit of a tang. It only goes in in one direction. You have um, fourteen of them on a six cylinder. See, right there. Yep. And so um, I think there's a. And, and when you look at it here, you got one, and then you got the two, the place for the tang going in. So what you want to do is go in and, and then you sort of jostle it, and then you feel it. There you go. Boom! Look at that. Wow. Our engine is practically assembled. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, this is going to be a little bit boring, uh, but, you know, we're going to do that for all of these. Oh, and um, and then we'll cut to these thrust thrust bearings. Super important not to miss these. These these will prevent, uh, not, not prevent, th these will determine the end play of the crankshaft, the way I understand it. Um, and they only go in, in one spot, so. All right, we'll just install these. Yep, and I'll give, you guys, I'll give yeah. you guys a nice little uh, fast forward of putting all of these in. Yeah, because um, because the other half will mate here. Uh -huh. um, if you see, this has no tang. This does have a tang, uh -huh. right? So, and so, how much was the coating process? Um, the coating process was, and I have it all. I have it all on the spreadsheet. Actually, you can you can touch. The coating process itself was a hundred and twenty bucks. Okay. For 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 all of this. Uh huh. Uh, and then they were shipping, but we, we could have actually driven there. Um, it's uh, north of Charlotte. They do it for oh. all the NASCAR Is that people. Is in Concord? Yeah, I think so, right around there. Cool. It's called Calico. Calico Coatings. So you had to provide the bearings? Yes, they don't, they don't keep these in stock. Um, now, you can also buy these Calico-coated bearings from Ellen Engineering. Huh. Convenient. For double the price of the... <laughs> <laughs> of the um of course convenience of the yep. convenience always costs yep so i was told there is no such thing as too much lube here that's what she so, said so, yes <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably going to be super drippy i can't believe i'm really assembling this it's pretty awesome <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> i feel like i'm in the presence of greatness here <laughs> Dude, you're in the presence of somebody who has. I have. I have probably spent uh, ten to one uh, hours um, Research researching and 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 having, um, you know, 
looking at it, going through it. And, and my wife said, just go ahead and do it. I'm like, nope, nope, <laughs> not the way things work for me. Uh, not yeah, the I'm the way same way. Engineers uh, tend to. I do way too much work. research because way there's nothing like this out there on YouTube for you to see. So that's why I make these. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and if you actually, if, if you do it right, this will move not quite nicely. Like you'll have a nice movement. Uh, now I didn't start the assembly yet, but I did uh, balance my rods and I'm gonna be shaving some stuff off the pistons. Again, not that it's really necessary, not that. Um, yeah, I have no idea how to do any of that stuff. So oh, it's be cool to see. It, it's fun, yeah. Um, but you know, people, people want to get, um, pistons and rods within like a 10th of a gram. Mm -hmm. Right. And the spec from, from, uh, from the K1, from the manufacturers of the, of the rods say, oh, we'll, we'll do it within one gram, um, mm -hmm. which is probably fine. Most, you know, the, the guys from hard tech, uh, oh, we don't, I mean, you might get a few more RPMs out of it, but <laughs> it's, you know, the tolerance from the factory was um, a gram. It's not that easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to get a reproducible measurement uh, within that tolerance. And I, I do have a, uh, I do have a measuring tool for the end thrust and for the bores. I got a really cool bore measuring tool. Huh. If you wanted to see how round it was, because part of the problem with the, our engines, including yours, is you can't see um, the lack of roundness or, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what, what that measurement is called. Um, when they start to get oval, that's what, that's the first driver of the uh, bore score, right? Because the engine starts going off round. Shaking a little bit. <laughs> no, it, no, it squeezes the piston in a particular direction. Uh. And, and then it rattles in another direction. Uh -huh. so, and these calico cogents are supposed to um, make your crankshaft last, mostly in cold startups. Um, you know, I, I don't know, they use them in high performance engines. I figure for a hundred, but I mean, I was already deep into it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the general advice is it helps. Uh, no, it doesn't hurt. Probably helps. <laughs> Not a lot of data um, around it. The factory doesn't use it. Um, factory wants to save money. So. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but, you know, but NASCAR If you're going to keep the car, yeah. If you're yeah. keeping the car, then... Uh, I would do it. I won't be doing it for my engine because I'm just going to fix it and sell it. And, yeah. Uh, Until you do an engine, money. if you like it, then you will. Yeah. It looks like we know what we're doing at least. Well, yeah. If you have to do something 14 times, right? <laughs> you do it a couple times. And, oh, yeah. I'm getting really good at this. Really good at this. All right, so we've installed the main bearings. Um, during the installation, we grease them all up with our assembly lube, right? And so a couple, uh, a couple things. Um, we now need to fit these. Uh, thrust uh, bearings. So these these bearings, there's only two of them, right? And they get fitted uh, on the half that has the pin. And there's only one place, really. See, there's a there's only one place that has that little indent uh, there to place them. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the assembly. Yeah, all the other loop. journals are flush, and that one's got uh, that is correct. Groove cut Super, out for it. So. So in, in this particular case, Calico only quoted, uh, coded the part that is going to be touching uh, the crank um, and not the other side. So it's a little bit easy. But for those of you that didn't get encoded, the, the grooves 
which are lubrication um, grooves, go on the outside. So this particular one goes here. Laces out. Just laces right. out, laces out. This one goes here and this one goes here. Right? There it is. Ta -da. All right, so the next step is we're gonna take a crank I'm gonna put it in lube position, and we're gonna introduce a new tool, our um, our grease brushes or whatever. I'm sorry, I don't remember the paint name. brushes. Paint brushes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And so these have loose bristles. You got to make sure that you clean those out, kind of work them through, so the, the bristles that are loose. Um, we're gonna use this to help us put some assembly lube on the main journals. The main journals are on the axis, uh, and, and what are these called? These are, are the connecting rod journals? The connecting rod journals, yes. You do not want to lube those, you want to lube yet. The, right. Yet, yes. You want to lube the main journals, yeah, because the main journals- Straight down the middle. Straight the down the middle. That sit in here. So we're going to start and apply some, some lube. We're gonna do one half first. Flip it over. Uh, and then flip it over and do the other ones. Uh, uh, I've been told to be very generous. Um, lube is Be a generous lover. Yeah, <laughs> generous luber. Uh, lube is inexpensive. Uh, worn pieces of metal inside the engine. More expensive. More expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so just be generous with the dabbing. All right, and uh, there's. Not controversy, but there, there are a lot of discussions about what um, what lube to use, you know, the thickness. This is a, this is a high viscosity uh, lubricant, uh, but it is kind of thick. Um, viscosity has to do with the, the amount of, I guess, yes, yes, lubricity. Um, some people use thinner ones. I, uh, I am not going to build this over a weekend or a week. Um, so this, this thickness of lube, I guess, is going to have a little bit more staying power. Um, and, yeah, uh, just spider webs to, look like they'll stick there for a while. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it's going to be a while. be nice to have this engine done by the summer, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? All right, so just make sure that you didn't lose any bristles in the process. Get uh, cleanliness is next to godliness, they say. I don't know, some people say. <laughs> Make sure you have a nice painted surface and inspect for any loose bristles. All right, so now remember, pin, crank pulley side. We are going to fit the crank to the side where we put that's the right. flywheel side, right? Yeah, this is a flywheel side. Because technically, I guess the pulley goes over here. Does it? Oh yeah, this is the flywheel side. You're right. Uh, thanks for that. Again, I'm I only know that because not a professional. I disassembled mine yesterday. So. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. And but yeah, make sure you put this in the side with the little uh, thrush thrust thrust washers. Yep, yeah, they're washers right there. there. Yeah. And it is not going to be very easy to turn, in fact. Um, so don't attempt it, as I am. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we had our bearings all lubricated prior. We're gonna re-lube just, you know, just to, okay. and then we're gonna proceed to mate the halves. I don't see any uh, parts left over, so. No parts left over, right? Okay. Squirters are in, check. All the bearings are in, check. Crank is in the correct position. Thrust washers in. Nice and flush in there. Nice and flush. All righty. So here we go. And, you know, one last check. Dowels and dowel holes. So this is gonna go as such. Here we go. Give it 
Tap, tap, tap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He doesn't like violence uh, against machines. Uh, so this is the part you were talking about where it looks like it overlaps. Yeah. Here, there. Yep. But, like uh, right here. That's, but that's again, Especially I've learned. Because everything else lines up. That everything yeah. else lines up. It doesn't make a Maybe difference. And you will not be able to. Yeah, same here. And you, but uh, when you look in detail inside here, that part is lined up. So, and you will not be able to turn this. You will not be able to turn this. This is just not going to happen. Okay, so we drew on top of the case the uh, sequence for tightening these things up. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You just kind of start in the middle and work your way out. All right, so um, we're gonna put dry bolts uh, because these are torque to yield bolts in all 14 positions um, and then tighten them by hand. You don't really need to put them in an order, but. Tightening them in the right order is the important thing. Yes. <laughs> and um, these get tightened, the torque to yield, and um, Aaron's gonna show me how to do it with my tool here. Um, it, it's a two-stage process. So you first torque this to, I believe, what, 50 Newton meters, 11 foot-pounds, and, and you should definitely look at um, uh, your own uh, I don't you think know, 50 you're newton meters is 11 foot pounds, is it? Okay, did I go, did I go back on that? that seems... Uh, 15 newton meters, 11 foot pounds. Oh, 15. Oh, okay. 15. I thought you said 50, sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's 15. the initial one. And then, and then you, what you have to do afterwards is do 110 degrees, which is, I don't know, it's, a, it's weird, but that's what you do. 110 degrees after the 15 newton meters. Um... So right now we're just tightening it by hand with my handy helper here. <laughs> um, and videographer, producer, director. Uh, he's giving me all the scripts. I'm just the talent. Um, God, I can't believe we're at this stage. When I bought the car, um, oops, uh, I'm like, Oh, this sounds like a good project. Then I disassembled the engine, and I'm like, "Holy cow!" So, the <laughs> so most many parts. Uh, the <laughs> most important thing is just take it one piece at a time. Uh, I have a, a a massive list. I don't know, two three hundred parts that were bought for um, for this build, um, and and it's daunting. So what I chose to do is. Uh, use the uh, sort of the Porsche parts diagram and just look at one at a time. So one day I would just look at one part diagram, look at uh, look it up, research the prices online, and um, you know uh, just go with that. I I think I ended up when when you look at the difference uh, in prices across the board, I ended up saying I don't know, almost a thousand dollars by buying different parts from different vendors. All right, some shopping. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I got my handy dandy torque wrench here. What did I say? 15 and 11, right? Yeah. Boots up. Hey, hey, look at you. Does that say? Newton, Newton meters. meters. Okay, 15. Maybe yes. 15. Um, so do we torque them all to 15 and then do the That's how it is. 100? Yep. Okay. You go, we torque them all to 15. That's stage one. And I am using. An impact, ten millimeter, you know, twelve point socket that fits these things rather nicely, I think. Right, and so um, I, I'm going to do it actually in, in two stages. I'm just going to hit a little bit. Yeah, just get them all. Just because, uh, yeah, all kind of snug-ish. In the right order first. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if I have one of those uh, sockets. So, uh, it's yeah. another good reason to do this research ahead of time. So, buy, oh, yeah. buy all the right stuff. And um, I don't. I would think that your case has the same. Um, yeah, I'm sure it does. I haven't gotten this far. The same. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is deep in the engine, in the bowels of the engine, for sure. But yeah, all the tools that I'm using, I'll put links in all my descriptions, of course, for you guys. These are... So this is probably an unnecessary step, but... I mean, can't be too careful. Yeah. The heart of your engine. Exactly. Oh, and, and so don't attempt to, to, to turn this right now because it won't and you'll get frustrated. Uh, you, you should turn moving parts as you assemble, of course, uh, but at this stage, it will not turn. Things are not lined up, matched. It will only turn, if assembled properly, and <laughs> torqued to spec. So now we've got our 15 Newton meters, confirm that that's the case, and so we're gonna go ahead and start it. Here it is, man, this is, <laughs> this is it. Probably you don't wanna screw up. All right, until it beeps. I do it until the, the first long beep. Well, that red now let's go back. The red usually means you're going too far. Oh, your red means you're there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went slower that time for the... So I just went for as as look as soon as I get that beep I stop turning. Six. Yeah, I went stupid and bought the uh, snap-on torque wrench. That's, oh, that's, that's only, fancy pants. That's the only snap-on tool that I own, and it's uh, I mean, and it's, it's pretty probably awesome. yeah, but also like six hundred and fifty dollars. Jesus, I mean, you can buy a whole engine for that. <laughs> yeah. Eight, nine. I love putting this here because then you, it's, you know, you don't have to. <laughs> it still doesn't turn, right? Because you need to do the 110 degrees. I forget 13 or 14. Oh, did I not do, do that one yet? No, this was 12. Oh, yeah. See, this is why you need a See, handy dandy you. helper. I got you. Second set of eyes, always helpful. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to goof off. All right. Beautiful. It's not turning yet. Good. All right, now stage Okey two, doke. where we switch back over to the angle. Yes, and if you just have it this way, it ain't going to work. Oh, that's um, right, because you're going to... Because you're going to be putting a around. lot of torque on it. So let me go over to that side. We're going, to do is we're going to lay this down on its side. Whew. All right. <laughs> this is the part that I'm not very confident in. Um, let's, so let's see. Let's, let's put it to the edge. So I have room. Right in. All right. I can do it that way. Clearance. Okay. So uh, did we say it was 110 degrees? 110. Okay. So. Get that unit thing probably. Angles, okay. And on mine, it has to sit there for a second and zero itself, but maybe it's already zeroed. So now you can probably go to 110. Oops. Oh, you know, one thing that we didn't do, and the reason why I missed 13 and 14, mm -hmm. again, this is a matter of discipline, right? Um, we should witness mark every time you throw torque on something. Ah. And we did not do that, so we probably should. So um, now, once that is, each time we do one to 110, we'll uh, mark them? Yep, so to do. Right. since we have already done it. Um, but typically what you want to do, of course, is witness mark every time you torque. Yeah. We would not have missed the 13 and 14, but <laughs> good thing we have good record keeping and a good record keeping guide. Make sure this is... 
Oh, we'll just use that one already. Okay. All right. You ready? So, so let's see. The, be the best way to do is if you film from here, because yep. I'm going to come down this way, right? Yeah. And the best, oh, hold on. Yep. So you have turned that by hand. Did you oh, turn it by hand? Yeah. All right. So I've messed so it up. That, I don't know I why can't. it's not recording degrees yet on yours. All right, I'm going to well, mark that first one just, the... just to make sure if we move it that we'll have a, at least an indication of. Yeah. All right. All so right. Once you start putting torque on it, I'm assuming that 110. Yeah, there it goes. So I'm back to zero. So now it's counting to 110. Wow. Damn, 110. God, look Is at that, huh? Yeah. Oh, you marked it straight down, right? So I did mark it straight down. just about 110 degrees right there. Yeah, it's like a, a higher <laughs> over 90. Wow. Should we mark it again? Yeah, let's mark it a different color. Let's, let's do what real en engine builders do. Let's pretend <laughs> to be real en engine builders. All right. All right, one yellow dot. One yellow dot to go. Right, done. And I appreciate your help with... Okay, we got this. Oh, so are we wanna, starting again? Yeah, we need to start. Oh, okay. One. What did you do? One. I was showing you what you went to last time. One twelve. Okay. Do I need to? So I don't know if you. Yeah, I just pushed the up arrow and it went back to one. Oh, press C. Yeah. Clear. On this particular. Clear. All right. Craftsman, handy dandy. Tool. Yeah, I'll hold on to this a little bit. Here we go. So it doesn't, uh, All right. Now, since you're gonna have to go 110, you might want to start at like a. Angle yeah, why just, why is it that I didn't figure that one out? <laughs> make it easier on yourself. So it, I will end up here. Because yeah. the first, like I said, the first 40 degrees are always easiest. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah! Damn. That's right, baby. Yellow mark. Yellow mark. <laughs> <You> done. <clears throat> yeah, very good tip to start from the. So hit clear again, probably. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Again, it's awesome. I don't even know how I can do this without a. <laughs> Number three. Here we go. Oh, didn't did we? Oh, let's, let's let's do the thing that we did with all of them. Yeah, it's not gonna. Let's just do that one on all of them at the same time. Yeah, but why not do it? I mean, yeah, at least in the right ballpark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. Cleared it. I've done one and two. I'm going for three, starting at the Aaron angle. <laughs> the Aaron here we go. Fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty. 90, 110. It looks more like a 90, but it looks like success. Right, I'm going to start a little bit higher. I don't want to touch the, especially on the lower ones. Clear it. <sighs> okay, back to 110. Okay, if I start here, okay. Here we go. Five. Clear it. Nice, nice. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of this engine building By thing. number 14, we're going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, engine assembly really is simple. It's just uh, bolts and lube and uh, <laughs> like just that. concentration. Concentration. So you like don't everything else in life. Miss little steps. Seven, eight. I say with my sage wisdom after, exactly after watching a few bolts be fit in <laughs> one engine <laughs> clear and all my experience it's all about yeah having the right technique having the right lube <laughs> and clearing <laughs> clearing everything said. before <laughs> starting all right cleared number six here we go like the solid contact it's mm -hmm. good uh good technique 
80, 90. At 100, it starts beeping again. 8, 9. And there it is. I guess one could do it just with the angle on the markers, but man, sometimes the difference between a 90 and a 100, are clear? Yeah. Six, seven. Seven, right? Math skills. Yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> part of a successful engine build. All right. Make sure it's all the way down. You have to count to 14 to build this engine. That's the only mathematical requirement. Yeah. 14 for a six cylinder. Figure that <laughs> one out. True. I'm getting bored of this. <laughs> We're only halfway through. <laughs> All right, here we go. Keep focus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did we mention we put this on its side because otherwise it would slip the heck out of position and yes. be very difficult? Yes. <clears throat> think it's required for me to be holding it over here but just, <laughs> just in case <laughs> no i think the the key thing was the starting position there you go. the air and angle like the that. air and angle yes oh see i did grab it it did start trying to it did? yep yeah. two more two more come on man we got this. Final stretch. We got Final this. Final stretch. Okay, here we go. That's four. Got the uh, air and angle. Yeah, doesn't matter, but that's 14, not 13. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Cannot <laughs> deviate. I was just testing you. <laughs> the final. I'm liking this, Conrad. I'm liking this. <laughs> After this one, we're supposed to be able to rotate it, right? Oh, yes. Otherwise, we have to take it apart, <laughs> get different bolts. <laughs> it would be a hundred dollar mistake. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! Come on now! Oh, Look that's, at that! That's feel victory. it! Feel that's it! Victory. <laughs> Oh, oh, buttery smooth. Buttery smooth. That's because you have that thick lube on there. That's yeah. probably easier oh. to turn to. <laughs> that is it. Oh, oh, no. Oh, I almost forgot the one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it rotated without that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, how badass is that? I'm super excited about this series. Hope you enjoyed the first episode. You better be subscribed. Click the little bell notification so you don't miss anything and uh, give the video a thumbs up. It's really nice to be working with Conrad and letting him do all the work while I just have to film. So much easier for me, plus I'm not spending money on all of these parts. Uh, hopefully there's gonna be a ton of great information and value to you guys watching. I know that I already learned a lot and hope you guys will too. So stay tuned for the next episode.